So you are entering the magic world of quantum physics. Well, non-locality decision of the outcomes eh, here between these two detectors is decided, eh, could be decided by a free non-material choice coming from outside space-time. Actually, this was already included in the so-called collapse of the wave function of Copenhagen. This is a, much, a, a bit more complicated than this, but this concept of non-locality was already uh, implicitly included in this concept here, and this was what provoked Einstein. Uh, if you wish to have the decision here, then you have to introduce this concept of the empty wave, eh, that is a particle going always a well-defined way, uh, other path, but the other way you get a wave that is no material too, no? but propagating in space-time. So I think another issue. Really. I, you, interesting is that um, the experiment of putting the two, you have here an interferometer that is uh, another type of interferometer of, the, what, of this one, but is essentially the same. The, the experiment of putting these two detectors enough far away eh, from each other so that they cannot communicate when they are activated to detect Interesting, interestingly, this experiment has not yet been done. Eh? And I would like to, to do it. Eh? It is not quite complicated. It is enough to put the two detectors about uh, um, 75 cent, uh, centimeters far away. Eh? And to test whether, in this case, we have this uh, n n n the two detectors click together or not. So, an import, I think an important property of this non-locality at detection is that it is necessary to have conservation of the energy in each individual quantum process and not only in the average. An open question is whether this non-locality at detection and the Bell's non-locality, Antonio referred previously to, are two different types of non-locality, are the same type. Can one locality be derived from the other? These questions are, for the moment, open. Non-locality at detection in single particle experiments assumes that nature doesn't cheat. That is an important issue. So my demonstration of non-locality is assuming that there is no, teach, no cheating. Eh? If you, um, if one assumes the possibility of cheating, of cheating, and wishes implement non-locality for commercial purposes, like for instance cryptography, then you have to use entanglement and bell inequalities, like Antonio explained before. So, once again, uh, non-locality detection, quantum mechanics predict the distributions of the two detectors, but it does not predict the order in which these outputs come. No human being can, through material agency, manipulate a quantum interferometer and oblige it to print out a determined piece of information. What I am referring to about this control is a control which is non-material, which is uh, coming from outside space-time, also no material in the sense we understand this today in today's science, and uh, that is what I, th what I speculate can happen in the brain. So, uh, I would um, uh, speculate now to say that when you have here these outputs eh, uh, without any control, 
then you have a kind of unconscious spontaneous behavior like breathing and dice movements and uh, uh, behavior you have uh, in passions like vegetative state passion and so on and uh, in this and yeah, thing and here you are uh, this you could say well if this if here this is also moving randomness then here you will have no control i think that uh, uh, in our brain there is the, the two kinds of uh, uh, processes spontaneous processes without order without uh, uh, control and uh, the processes that you could control, for instance, moving, uh, changing the parameters here in order, for instance, to have the possibility of making more outputs of ones or mo mo more outputs of zeros according to the information you wish to, um, to, to give out. And the, the important point i think is that that is speculation is that there the what makes you conscious and acting consciously is some activating si system that relates these two kind of processes so that is why i think uh, uh, this would be a kind <coughs> of expander of non-material control a small seed of meaning of controlling this here is expanded into a much longer meaningful string that could be come out here. So that is uh, again in us in men we have movements of endogenous origin centrally coordinated who would be continuous if not breaked by a central inhibition when they are not needed. So what I am postulating is that you have this central control here which uh, is related to these outputs here. So that you can uh, have a certain, uh, when you say conscious, when you are controlling this here in order to get the output you desire. So, that is very much related to the whole issue of the central pattern generators. Mm. And uh, uh, these, uh, these central pattern generators are these kinds of generators who are producing the spontaneous movements we are doing uh, during much of, of our time. And uh, these uh, central pattern generators are uh, can be controlled eh, by uh, this other uh, in cortical influences and uh, this is for instance in epileptic discharge acts a trigger for the appearance of behavior which are the expression of inborn uh, patterns related to central pattern generators and that is I think uh, an important uh, uh, that is why I, I like very much the, the both talks on neuroscience we have heard. I think this, for instance, the research of SARA can indicate us where, which are the area of the brain, of the brain who play, which plays a role, a difference between vegetative state and between um, uh, locating. Hmm? So quantum randomness can be controlled by no material <coughs> principles and today's physics is compatible with free will. Non-locality and detection may be key to understand how free will may, must, may steer neural networks. When detection happens is an open question in quantum physics today. A big philosophical challenge, in my opinion, is this the question of where does the non-material agency in the universe outside our brains come from? It is for me the big material, the big philosophical challenge for the coming years. 
So it may be that free will requires likely more new philosophy than new physics. Thank you very much.